Hello, welcome in. We're going to be preaching on Jesus today. So if your soul is hungry, you have come to a good place. Welcome in. We're going to be preaching on Jesus today, guys. Hello, welcome. God bless you all. Okay, we're going to get started. We're in the Gospel of John today. Right here. And Jesus says here in the Gospel of John chapter 5, verse 24, He says, Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life. He does not come into judgment, but has passed from death to life. So if you don't have Jesus, you're still sitting in darkness, sitting under the wrath of God, sitting under the death that sin brings. But if you have Jesus, you will pass from death to life. You will not be facing judgment, but you will pass from death to life. You will pass from under God's wrath into God's love. And you will be filled with life. And you will no longer be ruled slaves to sin. No way, but you would be given power to overcome sin. The difference between a believer and an unbeliever is the power of Jesus. Jesus is the difference. He is the difference. So if you have Jesus, you will overcome sin because he has overcome. Right here, it says in the Gospel of John, the first page, it says here, the light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. You see, Jesus is the light and he came into the world. The world is so full of darkness and Jesus came into the world. Give me one second. Let me turn on the light. Let me bring you guys out to the light now. So the lights turned off. Oh my goodness, that was so creepy. We were just talking about how Jesus shines in the darkness and the lights just turned off in the room. And I can't find a way to turn it back on. So now I'm in the locker room. <laughs> But yeah, guys, we are still going to be preaching on Jesus anyway because, yeah, the devil cannot overcome the light that is in us. Greater is he that's in us than he that is in the world. So right here, the light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. Yes, I know that was so crazy. We were just preaching about Jesus being the light in the darkness and then the lights turned off in the room i was in and it's a and yeah it's a light at work so i tried to turn it back on but it wouldn't turn back on yo that is wild but anyway if we go right here the true light we're talking about jesus here the true light which gives light to everyone was coming into the world he was in the world and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, that includes you today, to all who did receive Jesus, who believe in Jesus' name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. See, not everyone is a child of God. To be a child of God, you have to be born again. You have to receive Jesus into your heart. You have to receive Jesus. And when you receive Jesus, you will receive that Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit will make you become born again. You see, it's not about what denomination you are. It's not about whether you're Pentecostal or Lutheran or this or that. It's about, are you born again? 
That is the question. Are you born again? Those who are born again, the Bible says, are a new species, a new creation in Christ Jesus. And you know you're born again. You will know. You cannot question it. You will know if you're born again. First, you'd be like, oh my goodness, I didn't want to read the Bible, but now like I start wanting to. And then you'd be like, man, I didn't want to go to church before, but now I start want to. See, your desires change. That's one of the first things. Your desires will change. And that's how you know you're born again. Your desires change. You start wanting to do the things that please God. And then you start grieving over sin. You start not wanting to do the things you did before. And you start grieving over sin. Instead of taking pleasure in sin, now you want to overcome sin. And that is how you know you're born again. And not just that, you have this overpowering love in your heart for Jesus. That's how you know you're born again. You have an overpowering love in your heart for Jesus. And so right here, let's go back. So we are in the Gospel of John, guys, for anyone who is watching. God bless you guys. For anyone who's hungry for Jesus, you've come to the right live stream. We are preaching Jesus here. Okay. And Jesus says here, in the Gospel of John, chapter 12, verse 44. And Jesus cried out and said, Whoever believes in me, believes not in me, but in him who sent me. Whoever sees me, sees him who sent me. I came into the world as light, so that whoever believes in me may not remain in darkness. See, if you have Jesus, you will not remain in darkness, but you will be filled with the light and the life of God. And you'll be filled with power, the power to overcome sin. Sin will have no more power in your life. As a Christian, you will still get tempted. You will still face temptation. But you will not be slaves to sin like you were before. Before we got saved, we had no choice. Sin was our master. The devil was our master. And we were slaves. We were slaves to that fear. We were slaves to that darkness. We were slaves to that sin. But after Jesus... When you find Jesus, you'll be filled with righteousness. You'll be filled with the love of God. And you'll be filled with light and everlasting life. Hallelujah. All right. Does anyone have any prayer requests before we continue preaching? So we'll be doing some preaching, then prayer requests, and then preaching again. So if you have a prayer request, just put it in the comments, and we will pray for you live. Yes, my friend, the real battle starts when you get saved. For my friend Lucas... We'll pray for you, Lucas. Father God, I pray for Lucas. Thank you, Lord. I pray that you would help him fight the battles that he's facing in his life. And I pray that you would bless him, Lord God, and lead and guide him in the narrow way. Thank you, Lord. Sometimes he feels like there's so many people pulling him to the left and to the right. But I pray that you would lead him uprightly in a straight and narrow way. Just like King David says, Make my way straight before me, Lord, for my enemies are many. For many are my enemies. And I pray for Lucas that though he has so many people around him that are telling him things, I pray that you would help him walk in the narrow way, that you'd help him walk uprightly in the way of righteousness, full of light and peace and joy. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, let's continue here.
right here. So Jesus says in chapter 14, verse 12, Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me will also do the works that I do, and greater works than these will he do, because I am going to the Father. Whatever you ask in my name, this I will do that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask me anything in my name, I would do it. And if you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper to be with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him. For he dwells with you and will be in you. All right, let's continue here. So we are preaching on Jesus being the light of the world. Yes, he is the light of the world. He says here in the Gospel of John, chapter 12, verse 46, I have come into the world as light, so that whoever believes in me may not remain in darkness. So those who are in Christ walk in his light. And Jesus says so very clearly, he says, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. See, so if you feel like you're sitting in darkness right now and the world is growing ever darker, the darkness is increasing in the world as at an exponential level. It is increasing in the world. So those who have Jesus, they have the real power. They have the real light. And look at the world. It's so temporary. It's passing away, guys. Look at the world. It's passing away. The cities, the civilizations that once was there, they're gone now. You don't see Babylon anymore. You don't see Mesopotamia anymore. They are gone. You don't see Rome anymore. Those but Jesus says so right here. I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Let me check if the lights are on in the other room. So the lights are still off in the room. It was so wild. The moment we were preaching that Jesus being the light of the world, then the lights turned off. Yo, guys. Let's continue here. So Jesus says so here. He says, if you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples and you will know the truth and the truth will set you free they answered him we are offspring of abraham and have never been enslaved to anyone how is it that you say you will become free there's a lot of people in the world you know when you tell them hey you're a slave to sin and they're like i've never been a slave to nobody i serve only myself i am only a me, I, myself type person. Me, myself, and I. Yeah, they're that type, okay? And they're like, yo, I serve nobody. I bow down to nobody. And they're all like that. They're all like me, myself, and I. And then we tell them, hey, you are a slave to sin. And they're like, uh, no way, I ain't a slave to anybody. But Jesus says so here, right here, truly, truly, I say to you, everyone who practices sin is a slave to sin. If you're addicted, you're 
a slave to that addiction. If you're addicted to lust or pornography or alcohol or anything like that, you are a slave to that. If you're addicted or in pain or if you're suffering from any sort of sin, you're addicted to that sin. And that sin becomes a master over you. That's what sin is. And we know that sin is married to death because sin brings in death. If you invite sin into your life, it will bring death along with it. However, if you choose to walk in the light of Jesus, if you choose to receive Jesus in your life today, he can set you free from that sin that you've been fighting. Right here. Truly, truly, I say to you, everyone who practices sin is a slave to sin. And then if you go down here, so if the son, he's talking about himself, Jesus is saying, if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. All right, let's continue here in the Gospel of John. And then Jesus says here that he is the good shepherd. Maybe a lot of you watching, I know some of you are Christians, and a lot of you watching, you've probably heard all this before. Jesus, the light of the world. Jesus, the good shepherd. But here's the thing, guys. You can never get enough of that. You can never get enough of these foundational truths. These are the foundations of our faith. The words of Jesus, the I am statements, who he says he is, the world out there, they're trying to create their own Jesus. That's what the world is doing, which is why it's so important for us to review over and over again who Jesus says he is, how he reveals himself through the scriptures, through the Bible. Like, yo, guys, and I know in a lot of churches, they take one verse and they just preach from one verse an hour-long message with one verse but we are here we are reading the bible we're reading the scriptures and we're not just reading one verse but we're reading entire chapters so you can get the whole context and so you can be filled with the word of god i want you guys to be filled with the word of god because that's where the power is apostle peter says that the word of God is an imperishable seed. An imperishable seed. That's the word of God. The word of God that's preached to you is an imperishable seed. That means it's a seed that goes into your heart. It's planted there. A seed that goes in your mind. It's planted there. And it's a seed that cannot die. It's a seed that blooms and blossoms to eternal life. That is the seed of the word of God. The word of God, when it's planted in your heart, it will grow and blossom, rising up into eternal life. And so let's go here, where Jesus says he is the good shepherd. Jesus says here, truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers. But the sheep did not listen to them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. He who is a hired hand and not a shepherd, who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. The wolf snatches them and scatters them. He flees because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. But Jesus, he is the good shepherd. Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. Just as the father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And other sheep I have that are not of this fold. 
I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. Thank you, Emma. So there will be one flock and one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me, because I lay down my life that I may take it up again. See, we are God's sheep. And Jesus says, I know my sheep, and my sheep know me. They hear my voice. So if you're watching, and your soul is feeling so joyful, so delighted, because you hear, you hear the words of Jesus, you hear his voice, you hear his voice just resounding into your soul. This is spiritual food, guys. This is spiritual food. And I am here because I want to see God's sheep be fed. I know God's sheep are hungry because it's so hard to find pre people preaching Jesus nowadays. It's so hard. It's so hard to find preaching that's full of life, full of the word of God. Jesus says here in the Gospel of John, Truly, truly, I say to you, you are seeking me, not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give to you. See, Jesus gave me his words, and now I am sharing it with you guys. This is food. Food that endures to eternal life. Look at the things in the world. They will all pass away. But Jesus' words will never pass away. Do you guys hear that? Look, all the pharaohs, they passed away. Rome passed away. All the big dynasties passed away. But Jesus' words still remain. His words are here forever. And his words will still be here, even in the new world. When God comes and creates a new heaven and a new earth, the word of God remains forever. And this is good news for us. We are in Jesus. Do you know what that means? That means though the heavens and the stars and all these trees would pass away, we would still remain because we are in Christ that's why it's so important for all of you watching. If you have not yet received Jesus, the doors of the ark are still open. Maybe you guys have heard the story of Noah's ark. And Noah was preaching. He's like, everybody get inside the ark. The flood of God's judgment is coming. The flood is coming and it will flood over the whole earth. There will be no escape. This is the only way to escape. This ark right here, just get inside. And people are all laughing and mocking. They're like, eh, what you talking about? Look at the world. It's so pretty. Nothing's going to happen. Ha <laughs> ha. And then the moment the rain fell down, it was not Noah that closed the ark door. God did. God closed the door of the ark. That means the gates of mercy shut. Boom. Right there. And so right now the gates of mercy are open. Jesus is the ark. He is the way out. He is the way out. God's wrath is coming to be poured out on the earth. That's why some people be like, oh, people are sinning. Why isn't God doing anything? That's because he's patient. He is patient and waiting because he has given mercy and salvation so that those who have sinned can repent and receive eternal life. That's why he's waiting patiently. For those sinners to repent and receive eternal life. But guess what, guys? Guess what? Those gates of mercy will soon close. There will come a time when the gates of mercy will close and there will be no more. There will be no second chances. There will only be God's wrath flooding the earth to cleanse the earth, to make it a place of righteousness. Soon, God is coming soon. And he is coming. Who, the Bible says, who can endure the wrath of the Lamb? Who can endure the wrath of Jesus? Some people think of Jesus and they're like, oh, he's, he's a sweet shepherd, you know, with the little baby sheep on the little postcard they hand out on Easter. Yes, Jesus is very sweet. And he's very kind and loving. But we must remember, he's also a warrior, guys. He's the commander of God's army. 
Jesus is a warrior and he hates sin. He considers sin to be his enemy. So if you are a sinner and you cling to your sin and you don't want to let it go, you have chosen to be an enemy of God. But if you're like, man, I hate my sin. I don't want it. I want Jesus. I want freedom. I want peace and love and joy. I want abundant life. I want to live. Then come to Jesus and he will wash you clean. No matter what your history, no matter what your background, no matter what you've done, come to Jesus and he will wash you clean and he will give you new life. He will give you a second chance at life. Come to him and receive Jesus today. Tomorrow is not promised to anyone. And I don't want anyone to ever have to experience hell. Like, look, a lot of us are already living hell on earth, you know? Some people be like, oh, I live in hell daily, you know? But guess what? You don't have to live like that. You don't have to. You can have abundant life. You can have joy. You can have purity and innocence and beauty and, and love. All you have to do is come to Jesus. Hope has a name. True love has a name, and his name is Jesus. If you come to Jesus, you will receive eternal life. Hallelujah. And yes, church is beautiful. My okay. I need to start going to church. First, go to Jesus, my friend. Remember, a lot of people go to church and are not saved. Go to Jesus first. When you go to Jesus, like for me, when I first came to Jesus, I, I didn't go to a church. My parents didn't allow me. They allow me now, which is amazing. It's a miracle of God. See, I was not raised in a Christian household, guys. That's why I'm here telling you the truth. I used to serve hundreds of gods. They're not real. There's only one that's real, and that is... But guys, when I first came to Jesus, I just went to my room, and I shut the door, and I knelt there by my bed, and I cried out, Jesus, help me. Jesus, save me. And he came, and he saved me that night. It was like the sun exploding in my room, such a bright light. His light exploded in my darkness. It's like God spoke to the darkness in my life and he said, let there be light. And boom, it's like Genesis 3 in my life. That's what happened. And so God's light filled me and I'm overflowing with love and joy and light. And I want you guys to walk in abundant life as well. Yes, I want you guys to be a shining light also. I don't want you guys to sit in darkness. Jesus said so himself. Right here. He says, whoever, I have come into the world as light so that whoever believes in me may not remain in darkness. See, if you're watching and you feel like you're sitting in darkness, Jesus is the way out. I've made it so simple. Simple as pie. Jesus is the answer. He is the way out. He is the only way out. And I want you guys to know that. And especially if you're surrounded by people who don't yet know the Lord, Jesus is the only way out. It's not about religion. It's not just about going from a mosque to a church or a temple to a church. No, it's not about a building at all. It's about Jesus. It's about the person of God, that God became a man, that Jesus, this man, this God man was willing to die on the cross, to bleed and die for sinners. So if you're watching and you've, you know that you've sinned, Jesus died for you. He gave his life to save you so that you can have a second chance, so that you can have a new life. Jesus bled for you. He died on the cross for you. Jesus longs to save your soul because he loves you. And he gives his love as a free gift. He doesn't expect any payment. No, he gives it as a free gift. You don't have to wash yourself and clean yourself up before you come to him. Just come to him as you are. 
Come to him with all your dirty laundry. Come to him with all your filth, all your pain, all your shame, all your guilt. Come to him. And my friend Russell's like, how do you know that? Because I experienced it firsthand. I came to Jesus. I came to him with all my mountains of sins. And I came to him and he washed me clean. And I felt clean and pure and innocent and alive. I was dead, but now I'm alive. I was blind and now I could see. I was in the darkness, but now I'm filled with light. And I want you guys to know that because Jesus saved me. He could save you too. Yo, I was not raised in church and he saved me. I was as far away from Christianity as anyone could be. I did not know anything about the church. I did not know anything about the Bible. I did not know anything about Jesus. And he came to save me. He wants to save you too. Hallelujah. God bless you guys. My lunch break is over. So I have to go back to work now. But I hope you guys are so blessed by this message. And if you guys want more, just go on my TikTok profile. Every single video is about Jesus. There's no random video on there. Nope. Every single video is meant to build up and strengthen your heart and your soul and your walk with Christ. God bless you guys. See you on the next video. Bye-bye.